In this video, we're going to look at how to find the percent composition by mass, and also very importantly, how to use percent composition as a conversion factor, which should help in combustion analysis problems. So percent composition by mass, there's a formula for it, which is not on your formula sheet. It's mass of the part over mass of the whole times 100. And as long as the masses are the same units, they would cancel out. A lot of the times you'll be asked for percent composition by mass for of an element in the compound. And if that's the case, the mass of the whole would be your molar mass, and the mass of the part would be however many atoms you have of that particular element times the atomic mass, so subscript times the atomic mass. Um, you can also do percent composition by mass for a mixture, mass of the part of that one component over the mass of the whole mixture times 100. So take a moment, try this problem. Calculate the percentage of carbon by mass in ethanol, and you might not know what ethanol is right away, and that's fine. Ethanol C2H5OH. So I would find the molar mass of C2H5OH, and that's going to go in the denominator in my equation, because that's the mass of the whole. And the mass of carbon, the, which is the part I'm looking for, would go on top. 2 times 12, or 24, would be on top. The grams per mole would cancel, and I'd get 52.2%. What you'll notice is that all your percent by masses um, of each element should add up to 100, since all these elements should add up to one whole, essentially. Okay. Um, take a moment, try this example. So I've asked for the percent of iron by mass in this particular compound. Get your molar mass of the compound. That would go in your denominator. Okay, the mass of the part, there's two iron, so 2 times 55.8 would go on top, um, and I get 53.7. Okay, you can also be asked for the percent water in a hydrate. So a hydrate is something is a structure that has actually incorporated water molecules into the structure. So you might see a dot, some number of H2Os, like this is iron 3 chloride dot 6 H2Os. This isn't a multiplication sign, it's telling you it's there's also six waters incorporated into this structure. They don't put a plus sign because then if you saw that in a chemical reaction, you would think that these are two separate entities, FeCl3 and 6H2Os, but it's all together in one substance, and that's why they put this dot instead. But if you're just looking at this formula, it's like it's almost like a plus sign if you are adding up the molar masses to find the molar mass. So for instance, um, if I'm trying to find the molar mass of this whole thing, there's one iron, it weighs 55.8, there's three chlorines, 35.5, and there's six waters, which each weigh 18. You could also do the hydrogens and oxygen separately, but why not do it all together? And I get 270.3. This is my mass of the whole, that would go on the bottom, and my mass of water would go on top. There's six waters, or six times the 18 would go on top, and feel free to multiply that out and put that number on top, and you get 40%. Okay, so this is 40% water. You could also use percent by mass instead of um, calculating percent by mass. They might give you percent by mass and give you the whole and ask for the mass of the part. So feel free um, to feel comfortable rearranging that equation as well. You can always use percent composition as a conversion factor to convert between the mass of the entire molecule and the mass of an individual component. Um, so for example, H2O is 18 grams per mole is my molar mass. Um, so if I kind of think of what that fraction is in mass percent, mass of part over mass of whole. So I could say if I was doing it for percent hydrogen, right, it would be 2 grams of hydrogen for every 18 grams of H2O. And if I look at this, if I look at these units, if I multiplied by this fraction, it would let me go between units of grams of H2O and grams of hydrogen. So I can kind of bypass converting grams into moles and then moles of water into moles of hydrogen. I can go directly between grams of the whole thing, grams of H2O, and grams of hydrogen by using this percent composition as a conversion factor. Okay. Or I can do any other kind of combination. For every 18 grams of H2O, there would be 16 grams of, of oxygen because there's one oxygen which weighs 16 grams. So it's really interesting to use this as a conversion factor in problems. Take a moment, try this example. This is using a substance that we already just found the molar mass of. Determine the mass of the anhydrate. Anhydrate means without the water. It means just the FeCl3 in 60 grams of the hydrate. So let's start with 60 grams and be specific, grams of what, grams of this entire hydrate. And let's think about what I want my conversion factor to look like. Let's think about the units I want to start in and the units I want to end in. So I want a conversion factor that has grams of FeCl3.6H2O, grams of the hydrate on the bottom. And I want grams of FeCl3 on top. 
Well, this is just using percent by mass as a conversion factor. I could put the molar mass down here because I know for every 270.4 grams of the whole thing, there would be 162.4 grams of FeCl3. That's the molar mass of FeCl3. Um, and you would get, when I put this into my calculator, 36 grams. It's essentially taking that 60 grams of the whole and multiplying it by the percent FeCl3 by mass, which is about 60%. You're taking 60% of that whole thing. So this is allowing you to convert between mass of part and mass of whole. Okay. Um, sometimes a percent by mass is given of a mixture, and again, you can use this percent by mass as a conversion factor when solving a problem to change from mass of the entire mixture to mass of an individual component. So take a moment and look at this problem. Six grams of a mixture contains 48 percent of CaCl2 by mass. What is the mass of CaCl2 in the mixture? So a lot of the times this might be part of a bigger problem. They give you the percent by mass um, of a certain compound. They give you the mass of the whole mixture, um, but they don't give you the mass of CaCl2, which you might need later on to do stoichiometry with, let's say. So whenever I see a percent by mass, I like to use that as a conversion factor in this kind of way. So I would start with six grams of the mixture, um, and I could say, I could turn this into to a conversion factor, if you want to show this with dimensional analysis, I could say for every 100 grams of mixture, there's 48 grams of CaCl2. Grams of the mixture would cancel, and I'd be left with CaCl2. Or you can think of it as I'm taking 48% of 6 grams. I could be doing 6 times 0.48. Um, so either way, I'm showing you how you can use this. Um, if you give in the percent, you can put it over 100. Um, and this will allow you to make your own conversion factor if you don't feel comfortable multiplying by like a decimal of, of a percent.